Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, for today's quick vid, we have quite a special video. At least it is for me. I'm so happy I get to do this. Here we have a family of orchids. Well, not really. In the sense that we do have a main species of Phalaenopsis orchids and two of her hybrids. So this here is the Phalaenopsis schilleriana, which is a very well-known species in the orchid hobby. It is a common orchid in collections and it's not a rare orchid to purchase even though it is a species. It is also not obtained from the wild. Having Phalaenopsis species or purchasing them doesn't mean obtaining them from the wild. They were still obtained and reproduced in cultivation. Getting orchids from the wild? No, no, not okay. Let the scientists deal with whatever is in nature. We have nurseries. Anyway, getting back to our story, the Phalaenopsis schilleriana is mother, if you will, to quite a few hybrids on the market, the so-called complex hybrids. And here I have two of them. Both of them are the Phalaenopsis J-Ho's pin girl. After this video is done, do a little Google search on J-Ho's pin girl so you'll see how many variations of it you can find. I have two, as you can see here. They're very, very similar between them, but they have some differences in the sense that one has a pinkier lip while the other has a wider lip. They are both mini Phalaenopsis orchids, but they have dark leaves and they're both the spitting image of their mother. At least this is what I think. On a corner of your screen, you can see how to pronounce the name of this orchid according to the AOS glossary, that is if you're English. If you're not English, you might pronounce it totally different. And P.S. the name Schilleriana doesn't really appear in the AOS because they forgot. <laughs> I'll link it down below to the glossary, but this is how you pronounce it. Phalaenopsis Schilleriana. This species is actually very easy to grow and it resembles a lot the complex hybrids in the sense that it does not bloom in the summertime like other popular species in cultivation. It blooms in spring and it is actually prompted by the lower temperatures to produce flower spikes. Therefore, its hybrids as well will be prompted by the same things and they will bloom in the spring, most probably for the vast majority of them, at least for the pink girl. About the Schilleriana, there are two very, very cool features. One is the leaf pattern. You can see here, this orchid has mottled leaves. And it's one of the few Phalaenopsis in cultivation that has mottled leaves and it is grown for something other than flowers as well. Now the flower display of course can be absolutely gorgeous and the flowers do have another trick up their sleeves, but the leaves just look beautiful. I don't think there is another Phalaenopsis species that looks quite this exquisite. But focusing on the blooms, you can see they are really, really beautiful, but they're also fragrant. The fragrance of the Schilleriana is very flowery. I'm personally reminded of violets every time I smell it, but in order to get the full potential of the smell, this orchid needs to be in very, very, very bright light. This goes for the hybrids as well. I've noticed that if you keep her in quite a shady location, the smell is gonna be very, very faint. The scent overall is mild. So if you've ever smelled a Bellina and expect the same intensity from the Schilleriana, you're probably not gonna get it. With a better bloom display, with more flowers, you will probably have a better fragrance as well but individual flowers are mildly fragrant. They're soft, so if you have a problem with strong fragrances, this is the orchid for you. The hybrids have exactly the same traits. These orchids don't really smell all that strong. It's a very faint fragrance and it's identical, in my opinion, to the Schilleriana fragrance and they smell more intense in very bright light. What I like to do is in the morning place them in direct sunshine, filtered through my sheer curtain of course, because the temperatures are pretty low so I don't risk burning them, and within an hour or two the fragrance becomes quite noticeable and quite lovely. Other than that, if I just maintain them under artificial light, they don't really smell all that strong. Speaking about artificial light, these orchids are known to be able to grow beautifully under artificial light as well. Just like any other Phalaenopsis, they're not finicky about that. However, I will not make a care tips video for the Schilleriana because as you can see, mine is a seedling. I have her for about two years already. It's a very, very, very incredibly slow grower. It's a known fact in the orchid habit that this orchid doesn't grow fast. But as you can see, it did manage to bloom even as a seedling, as a young plant. However, 
I feel I would be able to share with you more within a year or two with this orchid because if you do a Google search on the Schillerianna, you'll see how wonderfully this orchid can bloom. It can create a multitude of flowers, very long flower spikes, very branchy flower spikes. So it would be nice to make a, let's say, tutorial for this orchid when it will have a better bloom display. This is not the first time it bloomed. It's the second flower spike of its life, I think. But when I received it, it didn't actually look all that spectacular from the point of view of root growth. Also, I am testing Semihydra with this one. She is quite different than the other Phalaenopsis in behavior, although she takes the same care. Root system is a little finicky on this orchid, so I still am not sure if she will do well in Semihydro. It's still a test, therefore, no care tips, but I did give you a few details. The j Host Pain Girls, on the other hand, they're a joy to grow, and down below in the description, you have the parentage of the j Host Pain Girl. As you can see, the modeling leaves are missing from this orchid, but we do have very dark leaves, which is actually a trait of the Schillerianna. We're just missing the patterning. Such a shame, but it's okay. I believe these orchids can do very well in semi-hydro and in other setups as well, in bark, organic media, even mounted. They're epiphytic orchids, so everything epiphytic orchids like, pretty much they like as well. And other than that, light temperature and environment, they're exactly the same as any other complex hybrid Phalaenopsis or miniature Phalaenopsis. They were created to be grown in a house and they will do just that. However, maybe they're not as vigorous as other mini Phalaenopsis, just slightly, barely. I do still consider them easy to grow and a joy to grow and the fragrance is definitely a bonus. However, the Schillerianna, I still need to learn a little bit about her. She's a little finicky. Alrighty guys, this has been the video for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. We will see in the following years how the Schillerianna will perform, but it was really, really nice to see the species and its hybrids, at least part of them. You can totally see the resemblance, at least with this cross. They look almost identical, but this is the miniature version. With the J-Hose Pink Girl, there is just such a variety on the market. You can have miniature or even, let's say, medium-sized Phalaenopsis having a multitude of flower spikes and a multitude of flowers looking the very same. Thanks so much for watching, hope you've enjoyed this and you know the drill. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!